Today, you're going to learn about something called a session inside your website. And a session is very important to know about since it is the way that your website remembers information across all the pages inside your website. Now, we have talked about a post and a get method where we can send data from one page to another page. But this is more for when it comes to submitting data from the user or uh, submitting a lot of data inside the website that isn't really permanent, but it's more temporary information that just needs to be sent from one page to another. Another. But when it comes to a session, this is information that we want to store permanently inside the website or at least for a longer period of time inside the website uh, when a user is currently using your website. Let's say, for example, we want to create something like a login system. In order to create a login system, the website has to remember, OK, is this person logged in or is he not logged into the website? And when you go inside your login form and you type in a username and a password and then you click login, then if you typed everything in correctly and you were to log into the website, then the website has to remember across all the pages that, oh, this user is logged in. So everything needs to change inside the website. So we use sessions in order to store information that has to be remembered permanently inside our website in order for, for example, a login system to work. There's one thing I want to show you before we get started on any sort of code inside our documents here, which is to go inside my browser and open up this website that I just created, which is completely empty. There's nothing going on in here. Uh, you can actually see that I have nothing in here. Literally, there's no you know code inside the body tags. I do have a second page, by the way, which is called example.php, but that one is completely identical there's nothing inside of it and this is just to kind of demonstrate that it remembers information across pages so i just created a second page called example.php uh, so you can go ahead and create that one as well if you want to but i do want to show you that if i were to go inside the browser here go inside my developer tool which is f12 on the keyboard or if you were to go inside the website and right click and then click inspect then you also open up that way uh, if you were to go in here, you can see we have this very typical developer tool that we've seen so many times before. Uh, we have the HTML, you have the CSS, you can also see the JavaScript. Uh, but if you were to go up here where it says storage, and this tab may be in a different place if you're using a different browser, I'm using Firefox in this case here. If I were to go in here, you can see that we have something called cookies. And inside of here, you can see we do actually have a cookie that is related to local host because I right now have a PHP my admin turned on inside my browser. So it, do, it does have a cookie for PHP my admin. Now, a cookie is information that is stored directly inside your browser, locally inside your browser, not inside the server. And whenever you start a session inside a website, you actually generate something called a session ID cookie, which is going to pop up in here as soon as we start a session, because now we're telling the server that, okay, so there's this user here who is trying to remember things about the website, and the information is going to be stored inside our server. So in order for the server to figure out which person you are, because there might be many different users accessing the same website, uh, the server has to place a session ID cookie on your browser to figure out which user you are and which session variables you need to have assigned to you. So if I were to go back inside my editor, I'm going to go to the top of my index page and I'm just going to go ahead and open up and close my PHP tag. So we can actually type some PHP in here. And we're just simply going to start a session by typing session underscore start parentheses and semicolon. And with this simple method here, we now started up a session inside this page inside our website. So right now we don't have a session going on inside example. So we could actually go in and copy paste this information, paste it over here, just to make sure we have a session started on both pages. And then with this, we're now going to go back inside the website, refresh it. And when I refresh it and open up my editor, you'll notice that inside my cookies, we now have a second session ID cookie, which is called PHP session ID. And this is actually the session that we just started inside our web page using the session underscore start. So now the server knows, okay, so there's a session going on inside this web page, which means we need to put a session ID cookie inside the browser so we know which session data belongs to that particular user. Because like I said, many users might be using this particular website here. So for the server to pinpoint which user is which, 
we need to have this session ID cookie. If I were to go inside and delete this, because you can actually do that and say delete a PHP session ID local host, then the server no longer knows who you are and all the session data is probably going to get lost. So uh, this is not something you have to do because the browser actually purchased this. So if we were to close down the browser, it's going to delete all these session cookies. So you don't need to worry about, you know, them sticking in here because we do actually have some session security when it comes to sessions as well, uh, where people can go inside and hijack your session or something. And that is something we need to talk about at some point. Uh, for now, we're just going to talk about the basics of sessions and starting them up and how to delete them again and so on. So with this here, just know that as soon as you close down the browser, this particular session that you have right here or this session ID cookie will get deleted. And there is a reason for that. That is because the timeout for this particular cookie here is set to a negative. So therefore, the next time you close down the browser, uh, you can always, you know, extend this session ID if you wanted to manually. But let's go back inside our editor and talk a bit about session data or session variables that we can create using the session super global because we did actually talk about this one many episodes ago, but we didn't really talk about it extensively. Uh, but we do actually have something called a session super global. So if we were to say dollar sign underscore session brackets, and then I can go inside the brackets, say double quotes and give this some kind of name. So I could, for example, call this one username. So if we were to type username and set it equal to something, I can, for example, say crossing then currently I have a session data or a session variable that is equal to a string called crossing, which means that this information is going to get remembered on your server on any page that has this session underscore start started at the top of the page. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I want to start this session and I want to go down inside my body tag and I want to start my PHP tags because I want to demonstrate something for you. So we're going to say we want to start the PHP tags and close it again. And I just simply want to echo out my session variable that I just created up here and paste it in down here. So you can actually see that we can actually see this session variable now inside our page. But I do also want to take this echo, go inside my example page and show you that we can actually see it inside this page as well. So even though inside the second page, we didn't actually set the session variable at the top here, we should still remember it. So if we were to go inside my browser, and say, I want to refresh my index page. You can see, oh, we get crossing up here. If I were to zoom in, you can actually see it. Uh, if I were to go to my other page called example.php, then you can see we still get crossing because we echoed it out on the second page as well without even declaring it at the top because our session remembers, oh, okay, so inside the index page, he set this session variable, so now we can echo it out. So in this sort of way, we can store information inside our session that gets remembered across all the pages inside our website as long as we have this session start declared at the top of the page. Now, I do want to demonstrate something else here as well, which is that if you have a bunch of data inside your session variables, how can you unset them and delete the data again? Because that is also something you need to know about. So if we were to type a method called unset, and actually take my session variable. So if we were to go down here and say we have a session variable called username, then I want to paste it in here and unset it. So if we were to do this, go inside my website, you can now see that, oh, okay, so undefined array key username use because we don't know what this variable is because now it's been unset. Let's actually go ahead and go back to the front page because I actually think that makes a little bit more sense since we did set it here. Uh, so if we were to go back inside the front page and set the session variable and then unset it again right afterwards, go inside the website, go back to the index page, you can see it still gives us the same error message because, oh, okay, so we, we unset this uh, session variable. But let's go back inside the code and say that what if I have more than just one session variable that I want to delete? What if I want to purge all of them? Uh, what I can actually do is I can run a method called session underscore unset parentheses semicolon. And if we were to do this one, then it's going to purge all the session data inside our session so we can't see it inside our website. So we were to refresh the browser, you can still see that we get this, you know, we can't find the session variable. So everything has been deleted still. So this one here is for deleting all the session data. And this one is for deleting one session data. And now we do also need to know how to stop a session from running inside our page. So let's say I have a session started here. I can also go down to the next line and say I want to run a session underscore destroy. 
And if I were to run this one, then we're actually stopping the session from running again. So let's actually go ahead and go up here and delete this unset. So right now we start a session, we set a session variable, and then I destroy the session inside the same page. But now there's a small thing that I want to show you here, because if I were to save this, and actually let's go ahead and go back inside our example page here and just make sure that we only have our session underscore start at the top, and also to make sure that we have the echo down here inside the body tag. So with that in mind, if we were to go inside the browser here, this causing variable, when I refresh the browser, should not be available, right? Because I just said it purchased all the data. So if I were to refresh the page, oh, Okay, so costing is still in here. So the reason we can see it in here is because even though the session underscore destroyed does actually purge all the session data, it doesn't get purged inside the same page. So it doesn't happen or the, the effect is not gonna happen until I actually go to another page. So if we were to go back inside my uh, example page here, then you can actually see that when I access this page that, oh, okay, so this username session variable is not available because we did purchase on the previous page using session underscore destroy. So again, if I were to go back inside my, my code editor here, session underscore destroy is going to purge all the data, but you can't see the effect until you access another page. Often you'll also see people use the session underscore unset in combination. So whenever you want to completely destroy a session and unset all the session variables, this is how you would do it. So now that we talked about our session underscore start and how to create a session variable and also how to unset data. So I can actually write it in here again. There we go. So we talked about how to unset data inside our session variables. And we also talked about how to destroy a session. And again, just to point it out to your sessions are used in order to, you know, remember information across pages, for example, login system, or if you have a shopping cart inside your website and the user goes in and puts things in the cart, then the website has to remember across all the pages what you put inside the shopping card. So there's many different things you could use a session for to remember things. And of course, we do also have some security when it comes to sessions, which I think we'll talk about maybe in the next episode or maybe a little bit further ahead in this course here. So having talked about this, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.